It is one of the UK's most notorious crimes. Britain's biggest ever robbery. Gold bars worth 30 million pounds are stolen near Heathrow Airport. Now we know Mossack Fonseca helped in the laundering of proceeds. In 1983, a violent gang attacked security guards at the Brinks Map warehouse. They escaped with three tons of gold. When were you last down here then? About 1987, I would think. Long time ago now. So when you were watching... Former detective Billy Miller's job was to find the money. Some of it had been spent on property, like this place in Kent. The robbers used a Panamanian company set up by Mossack Fonseca. This memo shows they later learned they were working on the proceeds of the famous robbery at Brinks Mat in London. Well, once they knew that it was the, from the Brinks Mat gold bullion robbery, they should have washed their hands of it and should have no more to do with it, so it makes them as bad. How are you? Good to see you. The files show the Prime Minister's late father also set up an investment company through Mossack Fonseca in the 1980s. Ian Cameron and other directors would fly to the Bahamas for board meetings so they could say the company was run offshore. We've learned it never paid UK tax. And the files show investors held their stakes through bearer shares. They were used widely at the time and were legal, but are now banned in many countries, including the UK, because they can be used for money laundering and tax evasion. Bear a share is a piece of paper saying that you own a share of a company, which means that you can hide your ownership of bearer shares. And when it comes to declaring what assets, what wealth you have, what income you have, uh, it really leaves it just to you and your conscience. The files also show how offshore can be used to avoid tax on property, but there are strict rules. A hundred thousand homes in the UK are owned by offshore companies. Nick Haig owned one of them in North London. He sold it and made almost a million pounds. But did he tell the taxman? Mr Haig told us his offshore company fully complied with HMRC legislation in 2014 in relation to the disposal of this property. But is that the full story or is it really about sleight of hand? That Mr Haig is trying to look like his offshore company is in charge when really it's him. This document gives him the power to manage his offshore company without limitation. So has he been managing it from here? Hi, I'm Richard Milton from uh, BBC Panorama. I caught up with him to ask. That property in North London, did you make, you must have made about a million pounds on that. Did you tell the taxman about that? Richard, you've had my answer via email. Yeah, but these are such okay, a... Okay, Richard, I've given you my answer. And what is that then? Does the taxman know about that money? He should know, shouldn't he? Are you deaf? I'm not deaf, but I'm interested oh, to know. No, I'm, no, there's no problem with me. Listen, I'm just trying to get straight answers from listen, you, and that's Richard, proving a bit more difficult, you, to be you, honest. No, Richard, yeah. with all due respect, I yeah. gave you my answer via email. Yeah. You've had it. Yes. I made my position clear. Right. And that's all I've got to say. I know, but it, there are some problems with that. You've got to stop laughing. Okay? No, I'm interested. These Richard, are serious issues. I'm smiling because you I'm, are having a go at me, listen, but I'm interested Richard, to know what you think. I'm armed with a baguette, OK? <laughs> so I'm not having a go at you. Yeah. Mr Haig's lawyer later told us he had always acted within the law and his arrangements were a matter for his advisers and HMRC. Mossack Fonseca say the services they provide are commonly used worldwide. They are responsible members of the global financial and business community. Through the Panama Papers, the world is able to see what offshore is all about. Richard Bilton, BBC News.